All right, good evening. You'll find the scripture uh, in Titus chapter 3, verse number 5. We're going to read verses 4 through 6 to get the proper context, and then we're going to look at verse number 5 tonight. Uh, the Word of God tells us in Titus chapter 3, verse number 4. This is where we left off last week in our study. But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared. And notice verse number 5. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to His mercy, He saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost, uh, which He shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. And so uh, we see here Paul is writing to Titus and uh, making reference uh, to the incarnate God and that He's appeared to, to mankind. And also by conscience and creation, all of man should know that there is a creator and that there's a divine God. And then he moves over here to talking about salvation, a popular belief today uh, that uh, uh, you can get saved in, uh, in various ways. Jesus Christ made it very plain in the Gospel of John, I believe it was chapter 14, verse number 6, and certainly other passages of scriptures as well, but a very familiar portion of scripture John 14, 6, and Jesus answered and saith unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I am the way, singular, the truth, singular, and the life, singular. No man cometh to the Father but by me, singular. So that tells me there's not many ways to be saved. The only way to be saved is through Jesus Christ. And uh, I heard a, uh, 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 a news broadcast maybe two or three weeks ago now and uh, a university did a, a poll uh, among evangelicals in regard to salvation and what the, the thought was, was the only one way to get to heaven? Or did evangelicals or saved people believe there were other ways to get to heaven? And it was 67 percent, I'm not for sure exactly the, the number, uh, but it was well over half thought that there were multiple ways or different ways a person could end up in heaven. And so, beloved, uh, uh, some of these people, I think, need to read the, the true Word of God and get saved and get born again uh, because, let me tell you something, uh, there's not many ways to get to heaven. There's only one way, and that's through Jesus Christ. Uh, some people believe if they join a Bible-believing church or just join a good fundamental church and be involved and do good things and give, and listen, there's nothing wrong with that, uh, but that's not going to allow you to get to heaven. Now, some people believe if they uh, get baptized or sprinkled with water, uh, that that's sufficient enough, and at the end of the day, they're going to get to heaven. Uh, there's just a lot of multiple uh, beliefs out there today, a lot of apostasy, a lot of heretics, a lot of heresy that's being taught out there. And beloved, we certainly need to get back uh, to, uh, to God's Word and the truth of God's Word and see what God has to say about this. Notice here, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to His mercy, He saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. And last week we talked about uh, uh, God the Father. We see the Trinity uh, given here in verses 4, 5, and 6. The Father in verse 4, the Holy Spirit in verse 5, and then Jesus Christ in verse number 6. And uh, uh, beloved, of course, uh, uh, when Jesus came here and performed His earthly ministry, and the Pharisees and Sadducees and the religious people of that day uh, 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 did not uh, believe that he was who he was, said he was and uh, the Jews required a sign he performed all these miracles and yet he came into his own and his own received him not and then what set them uh, literally on fire and they wanted to run him out of town and kill him and get rid of him and so when he said I and my father are one he made himself equal with God and uh, beloved that didn't sit well with the religious crowd and uh, he said you know what uh, uh, we're going to run him out of town. Uh, he's bad news. He's bad for us. Uh, let's conspire a way to kill him or, or get rid of him. And, of course, we know the rest of the story in regard to that. Uh, but, uh, you know, the fact of the matter is uh, uh, God is a triune God. Uh, the, God. The Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 5, verse number 7, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And the Word is capital W. Uh, we find out, find out also in the Gospel of John, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, making reference to Jesus Christ. And so we see here that God is a triune God, and uh, each, each uh, part of the Trinity has uh, uh, a specific uh, purpose or function, if you will, but yet they're the same. Now, I know when you try to intellectually put your head around that, that can be mind-boggling and 
you don't see how or don't understand how that's so. Uh, beloved, uh, I will say this much. Uh, this is what God has recorded. Uh, this is what God has declared. Uh, do I understand all of it completely? Well, no, I don't. Uh, but I do believe it 110% uh, that this is true and that God is a triune God. And so uh, I hope that your heart's settled in regard to this truth. Uh, but notice here in verse number five, uh, uh, not by works of righteousness, which we have done. And again, a lot of people today uh, feel like that if they do enough good deeds and that, uh, 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 that they do more good than bad, that at the end of the day, the scale's going to tip in their favor and that God is going to allow them entrance to heaven. But God's told us about man's righteousness. Uh, we see uh, the setting of this uh, really all the way back in the book of Genesis uh, when Cain and Abel bought their respected uh, 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 sacrifices and, uh, uh, to the Lord. Uh, uh, and we know that Cain slew his brother Abel. Abel bought a sacrifice, but Cain bought the work and fruit of his hands. Uh, God, a uh, picture of Christ, a lot of foreshadowing here. Uh, God accepted uh, uh, the sacrifice of Abel, but he rejected uh, the work of Cain's hands and of course this made Cain so wroth and angry that he took it out on his brother and he slew his brother and so we see this demonstrated all the way back in the book of Genesis all the way through uh, the Old Testament and the New Testament uh, scriptures uh, beloved a lot of people that uh, today try to live and observe the law the law was never given to save man the law was given to show man that he's a sinner and that he needs salvation and that the only means of salvation is not by works of righteousness and obeying the law and keeping of the law, but by faith, putting your faith and trust in a Savior, which was given to all of mankind in the form of Jesus Christ. And so, uh, yet some people today still try to observe the law and their eyes are blinded to the truth. Uh, but, you know, God tells us in the book of Isaiah, chapter 64, verse number 6, in regard to man's righteousness, uh, the Word of God tells us, but we all, all, uh, but we are all as an unclean thing. Uh, for all of sin and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. The Scriptures are consistent uh, about this. We're sinners through and through. It's just that simple. We've inherited that sin nature for us by one man, sin entered into the world. Talking about Adam in the Old Testament, the book of Genesis. For us by one man, sin entered the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men. Why? For all have sinned. And so we all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. But we are all as an unclean thing, and all of our righteousness, righteousness is plural. Well, Lord, I, I help my neighbor. Oh, Lord, I give to a good cause. Lord, I went to church. Lord, I got baptized. Righteousness is plural. Man says, well, I've done this. Well, if that's not good enough, I'll do this. Well, if that's not good enough, I'll add to that. That's why it's termed this way. But we're all as an unclean thing, and all of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. They're tainted. Uh, they're spoiled. Why? Because man's a sinner. No matter how much good he does, the fact of the matter has been declared Man is a sinner, and there's nothing going to change that, no matter how much good we try to do. So our righteousness are filthy rags, and we all do faint as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. And so, beloved, uh, works, uh, uh, the Bible makes it very clear and plain that works does not save a man, uh, but works uh, should come about as a result of the new birth. Uh, we see this, uh, we'll see this in a couple more verses here in the book of Titus. But notice here in verse 5, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy, He saved us. His mercy, He saved us. Thank God for His mercy this morning. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ the Lord. Thank God for His mercy. Thank God for His mercy uh, this evening, beloved. Uh, but, but according to His mercy, He saved us. It's because of God's love and mercy that He extended for mankind. He gave His only begotten Son, and Jesus the one that tasted death on the cross for every man. He's the one that paid uh, for the sin debt in His totality, and He's the one that arose and conquered death in the grave. He's the one that saves us when we put our faith and trust in Him. You see, by faith. The Bible tells us a very familiar portion of Scripture. 
Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Listen, if we could be saved by our works, can you imagine what heaven would be like? You'd have all these evangelists and all these religious people and all these preachers and all these laymen and all these proud people saying, well, look what I've done, look what I've done, and if you've done this, I've done it better, and if you've done it better, I've done it better than you. And what it does is it takes away from the glory of Jesus Christ and what He did on the cross of Calvary. Uh, beloved, it's according to His mercy, He saved us. He's the one that conquered death, uh, 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 death, sin, and the grave of beloved. He's the one that uh, is the means of salvation. He's the one that should receive all the honor, glory, and the praise. It's just that simple. Not man, but Jesus Christ. And beloved, uh, you see it here upon earth now. Uh, 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 people comparing themselves with others and uh, patting themselves on the back and tooting their own horn and, and, and proclaiming to the world what they've done. Uh, beloved, I'm not interested in what they're doing, but I am interested in what Jesus Christ has done for all of mankind because He's the only means of salvation and redemption and it's through Jesus Christ. Uh, for, we, uh, for we are uh, or not of uh, works, lest any man should boast. Verse number uh, 10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. And so after we get saved, uh, beloved, we ought to produce good works as a result of the new birth. Uh, good works doesn't save us. Good works doesn't keep us after our salvation. But uh, good works should come about as a result of the new birth and as a result of of our salvation and being born again. Uh, beloved, that's why the Bible says old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Uh, beloved, uh, when you get saved, they ought to be a change, if you will. They ought to be a change that takes place. And these people that continue on in their sin without remorse, without contrition, without conviction, and they say that they're saved, uh, let me tell you something. There is a heart problem there. In all likelihood, there's not been a new birth because they're continuing on performing the works of the flesh, not the works of righteousness. And there's a difference between the two, and the Bible makes that extremely clear. And so, for we as workmanship created in Christ Jesus and good, and good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. You know what? When we get saved, we ought to bring forth fruit. And beloved, when we go about and we do good works, that produces fruit in a Christian's life. And we show others the love of Christ and people see Christ in us. And beloved, we have an opportunity in the door of utterance to share the gospel message and live in such a way that honors God, uh, that God will use your testimony and your good works and use that as a means to draw that lost person to himself and point out to them that they need what you and I have. They need forgiveness. They need salvation. They need Jesus Christ. You see. And so, uh, beloved, uh, that allows us to bring forth much fruit, as the Word of God tells us. In Romans chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, the Word of God tells us, Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Who God imputeth righteousness without works. Uh, beloved, when we get saved, uh, beloved, we can't work enough to obtain salvation, but when we by faith call upon the name of the Lord and ask Jesus Christ to come into our heart and save us, and the Holy Spirit of God comes in and quickens us, and ye hath ye quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, when the Holy Spirit of God comes in and resides in us, and we are quickened and spiritually made alive and sealed by the Spirit of truth of the Holy Spirit of God, uh, beloved, uh, uh, the righteousness of Christ is imputed or placed to our account. Uh, beloved, it's not our righteousness. It's not the good things that we're going to do or have done or currently doing. No, when we get saved, it's the righteousness of Christ that gets placed to our account. It's kind of like an a electric transfer of money in your bank account. 
You know, you're sitting here and you have nothing in your bank account and there is payment due on the house, the car, the utilities, uh, the student loan, whatever the case may be, and you have got to have that money or you're going to lose everything. And you just don't know what to do. And then you hear about somebody that... Uh, uh, you hear about somebody uh, that can pay your debt off and you pick up the phone and you call them and say, hey, you know, uh, 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 I'm in dire need. Can you help me out? And then Jesus Christ says, well, you're in bad shape, aren't you? You're a sinner. Yes, I am. Uh, uh, and if you don't, uh, uh, if you don't, uh, uh, if I don't do this for you, if I don't pay your debts for you, uh, they're going to turn off your electricity, take your home, and you're going to be uh, suffer complete loss. And by the way, that's what happens to a sinner without Christ. They suffer complete loss, and they spend an eternity in hell. You lose everything. And you know what? Jesus says, you know what? Uh, you'll lose everything. But I'll tell you what, uh, if you'll just, uh, I'll tell you what, uh, if you'll just put your faith and trust in me, and you've acknowledged that you're a sinner, and that you have acknowledged that you're without strength and without hope and uh, that uh, you're going to lose everything. But if you'll put your faith and trust in me, guess what? I'll pay that debt for you. I'll pay that debt for you. And I'll transfer those funds and satisfy every demand and every debt that the law can put out there for you. I'll do it for you. But all you got to do is trust me and accept me as your Lord and Savior. Are you willing to do that? I tell you what, uh, 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 I'm thankful that there was a day and age in my life that I realized that I, was, uh, that I was without strength and without hope and that the only one that could do me any good and the only one that could save me was Jesus Christ. And so Jesus Christ takes care of every one of those debts and guess what? The righteousness of Jesus Christ is imputed or placed to your account. And so now we don't have any righteousness to offer God but now the righteousness of Christ has been transferred over and placed to us. And so when God looks at you and I, He doesn't see us for the wicked, vile sinners that we are. He sees His Son's blood. He sees His Son's righteousness. And He doesn't see us for the sinners that we are. Now, beloved, that's shouting ground material. That ought to make us rejoice here this evening to know that the righteousness of Christ has been placed to our account. And then when God sees us, he doesn't see us for who we truly are. He sees His Son's righteousness. Praise be to God. Glory to God. That's what the word impute means, to be placed to the account of. Uh, even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Praise be to God. I'm thankful that to my iniquities have been forgiven and the sins have been covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. And in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 9, the Word of God tells us, Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works. The Bible is very clear, Old Testament and New Testament alike, that man cannot save himself. He needs a Redeemer. He needs a Savior. And the only one that uh, that can help, the only one that can truly save is Jesus Christ. Not according to our works, but according to His own purpose and grace. Doesn't that sound familiar? For by grace are you saved through faith. To His own purpose and grace, which are given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. You know what? God doesn't shoot from the hip. God uh, doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't react uh, 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 to things that take place, uh, beloved. God knew, already knew what was going to take place. God already knew that man was going to fall and commit sin and disobey and break fellowship uh, with him and need reconciliation. And before this world was ever uh, spoken into existence, God already had a plan in place to reconcile lost man back to himself through His Son, Jesus Christ. Oh my goodness. We serve a wonderful, magnificent, glorious, all-powerful, all-knowing God. And I'll tell you what, uh, uh, in the day and age that uh, we live in, 
It ought to bring us comfort to know that God is still in control. God is on the throne. And as these events unfold before our very eyes daily, before this world was ever in existence, God already knew what was going to take place. And beloved, that ought to bring comfort to our hearts this evening to know that God is still in control and God is allowing these things to take place, that this is His permissive will for these things to take place. And there's a reason and a purpose for it. We may not understand all of it, but rest assured that God is still on the throne and God is still in control. And so we'll stop there at verse 5 here this evening, and we'll pick up with verse number 6, which tells us, which He shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. And here we see uh, uh, the third part of the Trinity mentioned here, Jesus Christ, our Savior. And so we'll talk more about the Lord and how He has reconciled lost man back to the Heavenly Father through Jesus Christ. We'll talk more about that next week. But at this time, let's stop and pray.